Hello, I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County, Georgia. Thank you for joining me for this special edition of 8700 to honor Black History Month. It was October 5th, 2014, when I became a part of Black History here at First Baptist Church, Lithia Springs, when I was ordained a deacon. The Bible tells us a deacon is a servant for the church. Years later, I'm standing here as the first African-American Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. I believe I would not have reached these milestones in my life if it had not been for heroes, such as my mother and father, Vaughn and Brenda Martin, who instilled in me the power of commitment after being married for almost 50 years, and my best friend, Mark Minor. As a Howard University Law School grad, Mark epitomizes fairness and biased opinions and has been a pillar of support in all facets of my life. Very shortly, you will hear from key members of our community. We will share the ways they have contributed to black history in our area. You will hear about their personal stories and reflections about the heroes that have helped inspire them. Well, if I were to say who my heroes were, it would definitely be my mother and my father. They were two of the hardest working people um, that I have ever uh, seen uh, in my lifetime. Watching them work uh, and be committed um, to decisions that they've made uh, was just remarkable. And they instilled in me and my siblings a really strong work ethic. They are my heroes. I, I see them now. Uh, and still they're hard workers. And still, you know, they are still very much involved in my life as well as in my siblings' lives and, and continue to direct us and make sure that rem we remain on the right path. You know, when you think about heroes, you think of, of people who don't just uh, show up in your life uh, briefly, but people who uh, are there and are leading you in all facets of your life. And, and that's what they've done. Uh, educationally, socially, religiously, um, they are my all-around heroes. The heroes that most influenced me are those young men and women who sat at the lunch counters and were spit on and they sat there in order to open the way for others, as well as those who marched and were knew that they were going to be bitten by dogs and attacked. and. Um, spit on and hoses on, hose down with water. Those are my heroes in Little Rock Nine, the courage that they had to have had in order to do what they did, go into the school and, and, and break the barrier there. Those are my heroes. And I don't know if I had been here during that time whether I would have been able to do that. So I look at them and I thank God for them because they are my heroes and I'm sure that there are others who um, view them that way as well. My father, Eddie Pound, and Sheriff Earl D. Lee. What really truly got me interested in policing, my father was a security guard and he wore two 357 on each side. Once I was a police officer, the sheriff was Earl Lee. And I worked at the city about two years and I kept hand, hearing these outstanding things about Earl. I want to go to work for him. So I went out and asked him for a job. He gave me a job as a deputy sheriff and I really give him some credit for me being where I'm at because the things I learned from him, you don't never forget. My heroes that have contributed to my professional growth and my personal growth would have to be Oprah Winfrey and Barbara Walters. They both have inspired me to work hard for everything that I've achieved. They've also inspired me to work hard on my personal growth and my personal development to always be kind to others. Professionally, they've always taught me to teach others with kindness and dignity and to always remember that everyone has an important story to tell. And that's why I enjoy my life, my career, and my passion so much. My mother. Uh, my mother uh, just availed any opportunity for education in our home. We grew up with, and there were these three books from Ebony, and they were these brown books. They were a series of encyclopedias, and it talked about black history in America. 
And so she had, there are two boys and two girls in our family. She had us laying on the floor like spoons. And she said, this is how your ancestors came over in this country. You know, you were on the middle passage. And so we had to act that out. And then she said, but your derivative from Africa, which is a cradle of civilization, kings and queens. So hold your head up high and, you know, you can reach for the stars. And so my mother was an activist, an educator, and she's one of my sheroes. She and Rosa Parks. I really look to Rosa Parks in history. She's one of my sorority sisters. But what she did, she was an ordinary person that made extraordinary strides in the civil rights movement just because she was tired of injustice and she did something about it. Um, when I was elected as mayor in 2015, it was the 60th anniversary for Rosa Parks sitting down on that bus in Alabama. And I just thought that day, um, for my runoff, it was December 1st, 2015, that she sat down on the bus so that I can stand up in Douglasville, my girls can run. So Rosa Parks and my mom. I, I feel that uh, me being the first African-American uh, to serve in this role as uh, commission chairman, first of all, I would like to say I'm humbled and I'm honored. Um, many are called, but a few are chosen, and I didn't choose myself. It's from, I believe it's from the Supreme Being. He decided that I was the woman to lead the county forward. He knew that I had the principles and values of doing the right thing. I'm very conservative on a lot of issues uh, with regard to cost savings and uh, moving the county forward and making sure that the taxes are in place. And, and he knew that I would be the voice for the people of Douglas County. I have 144,000 citizens that I wake up every day realizing that I report to them and I work very hard to make sure that their voices are heard. So being first, I, I, it's initial shock and I'm realizing that I will be in history books uh, moving forward. Uh, again, I'm just humbled. I'm, I can't even express the excitement uh, knowing that I am the first, but it wasn't about being the first, it was about a person that would make a difference in the lives of others. And I wanted to enhance lives. And, and I'm just so grateful that the citizens of Douglas County uh, just extended that opportunity for me to just show them who I am as a person, as a woman, and as a leader. Well, I hope I'm, I, I guess I'm a significant part, but it, to inspire others, uh, that uh, others that looking to become, uh, make their dreams become a reality. Hopefully they can see me and, and, and inspire them to want to be uh, like me. When I was a young young boy growing up, I used to recall uh, other African American men that would come to the school and I would look at them like, wow, that guy doing that. So it put a fire in me, little accomplishments. I, God has blessed me with, I hope it relate that to some others. I think that each one of us has a calling, uh, has a part to play in history in order to make the lives better for everybody. And I just think that that was my, this being in the position that I'm in was my part to play in order to see if I could make some lives better for other people and not just for black people, but for people, period. So, and I, I just really believe that God has that for everybody. Whatever corner you're in, brighten that corner, but it's supposed to help others, not just for yourself. It is so good to know that I can be somebody that other students, that other professionals look up to. This is a, this is a very important field that I'm in, the field of public information and working within our schools to go out there and tell stories. It's good that I'm there telling the stories, the good stories especially, that don't often get told. And it's good to know that I'm out there getting the facts and the information out there so that families and students can know what their schools are actively doing to work for them. So it's good to know that I am a part of history that I am making a difference in the lives of my community. I'm humbled, really, and I think that it's the spirit of people in America, especially Americans, regardless of your ethnicity, that we don't give up. And for me, being the first African-American mayor and female in Douglasville's history since 1875 just shows the spirit of people and for me, it was um, organic. It's something that I just worked in the community. 
as a community person, as an elected official, an appointed official, a mom, a wife. And so I'm a regular person given an opportunity to serve the community. So being in a history book is great and I'm proud about it, but I think it's just part of what we do as people, as, um, as I do as an Army strong person being in the military. <laughs> it's just never giving up and having tenacity and making, uh, setting goals and attaining those goals. So I'm excited to be part of history and it's something that my children can look forward to and my, great, my grandchildren and great grandchildren one day, that their mom did something so it will inspire them to be able to do something as well. It means a great deal to me that um, I am part of black history, and not just black history, but Douglas County's history and being the first female Superior Court judge and then being the first African American uh, Superior Court judge. Uh, but to me, what's most significant about this role uh, is not the fact that uh, I'm the first. Um, it's the fact that there are young people who look at me uh, as both a woman and as a, an African-American and think, I can do that. She did it and I can do it as well. And so being part, a significant part of black history to me is just um, having that knowledge that young people can look at me uh, and say, she did it, I can do it. I can be sitting on that bench, I can be wearing that robe, I can be making a difference in my community. And so I'm hoping that that's the message that's being projected every day as I deal with uh, the community and with people that come before me. It really means carrying a legacy. I understand that um, the fact of the matter is not many females, not many African American females are afforded the opportunity to do what I'm doing. Um, I'm part of the International City County Managers Association and uh, we are quite often told that there are only 13 percent of us nationwide and that's not just African American but that's female total uh, government administrators and managers so I understand that um, there is probably some young girl um, some young boy who's looking up to me including my own children and understanding that the things that I do, I have to do them ethically. I have to do them um, based on the fact that I'm leaving a legacy for someone to make the decision whether or not uh, they can either trust in their local government and particularly the local government personnel. I think in 2018 it's more important than ever um, to celebrate Black History Month. Black history is woven deeply into the American culture and we have made such significant contributions to American history. So it is, it is more important now and I think it will be something that should be celebrated from now to the end of time, the contributions that African Americans and black people have made to this country. Well, I think you have to remember the past. It's a lot of people that sacrifice, that shed their blood, that shed their tears, work very hard for people to have rights nowadays. And I think we have to look at the past to honor how we got to where we are in 2018. We also have to move forward from what happened in the past, get past those, some of the things we, that did happen in the past, but still honor the past and learn from what happened in the past and move forward to a brighter future for all Americans. I would say that it's uh, significant to, uh, to celebrate Black History Month and uh, uh, the, the achievements and the, um, uh, the value added items that all nationalities bring to, uh, to the table. So to uh, say that it's significant to celebrate black history, I'd say it's significant to celebrate Asian history, to, uh, uh, to celebrate uh, Caucasian history, um, Latino history, so on and so forth, so that we can all understand that we all bring something to the table. We have all had uh, some input, we've all had some, uh, some significance in making America what it is uh, today and it uh, shows our young children that, uh, that they can do anything if they put their mind to it, if they work hard, if they commit themselves to uh, something, they can, they can achieve it. I think it is imperative that we continue to um, celebrate black history, we continue to celebrate uh, all of the accomplishments that all of the all other races have brought to the, uh, to the table and have, uh, again, made America what it is today. 
It's important to celebrate Black History Month year round, not just one month out the year, because the truth is our history is becoming forgotten. Even though it's being taught in schools, it's becoming forgotten by the younger generation. It's, it's shaped so many of us. Our past has determined our future, so that's why it's important to always look back, because if you don't look back with where you've been, then you don't know where you're going. Even for my children, I, it's probably hard for them to really understand because things aren't um, maybe as challenging for them as it would have been uh, maybe for my parents and my grandparents. Um, but things that are challenging when it comes to race are um, in some ways more subtle today and in some, may, in some ways very open. We still have a long ways to go even though I truly understand that um, a pathway has been created for me to even sit here to even be talking on this program that wasn't there before. So I think that it's very important for our children, um, very um, children of color, and very important for children who are not of color to understand uh, the struggle, understand um, also the privilege to be able to serve, uh, to be able to be in this skin. Um, we're all uniquely made, we're all uniquely created, and we all have something to give. And when we can give in a way um, of importance, that's an important thing for everyone to see. Um, and I think it's an awesome opportunity to be able to celebrate Black History Month in that way for everyone. As long as there are young people out there, as long as there are, uh, you know, whether it's a, a boy or a girl uh, who looks it, like me, and looks down at their skin and think that for whatever reason, whether it's because they're uh, a black girl or they're a black boy um, or a Hispanic uh, girl or boy, um, or just because they're a woman um, and they look at themselves and they think, I can't do it or it's going to be much harder because of who I am. As long as that is an issue uh, in our society, then we need to celebrate these things. We need to celebrate women. We need to celebrate, uh, celebrate black history. We need to show young people that there are people who look like them, who've done it. And I think that's the purpose of black history. Uh, I don't think that it's a celebration necessarily of being black. It's a celebration of the accomplishments uh, that someone's done. And that person did it, not, you know, not because they were black or African American, but because they were determined, they had a goal, um, and when young people take a look at that, they think, I can do that as well. And so I think, you know, whether it's uh, 1999 or 2018, as long as this society, uh, there's still an issue with race or uh, with gender, we need to celebrate those things and those accomplishments when they happen. We were fortunate enough to sit down with local resident Lavera Newton, who is 102 years young. She shared some of the things she has experienced over the past century and gave some fantastic advice for the younger generation. Oh, my parents, they were great. <laughs> they were parents of uh, seven girls, uh, my uh, mother, and my, and my father were both very, very dear to me. And they took care of all seven of us. I'm, I'm number two in that, in that bunch. I had a wonderful time with the Girl Scouts. No ending. I have, I have only one Girl Scout here with me, but they, when, they, when they're together, they, 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 uh, everybody noticed them. So uh, I don't know how many, we, uh, nobody else here in this group except my daughter, but we did have a wonderful time together. Girl Scouts is an organization that have developed young people in a, in a nice, decent way. And we, we had fun, and also though they were very respective of me. Howard and I were born and raised in the same little town in Fisher, Louisiana. And our parents were the same. We, we had on a, one nice big church, and we all went to that same church. So Howard and I met uh, in childhood, and we just kind of uh, stayed together uh, somehow. I don't know how, in God's will, I suppose, uh, for 71 years. 
uh, our young people that are coming up now, they need to know where they come from and how, how we got here. It's very important. It was wonderful in our lifetime to uh, have someone that would step out in public and uh, say things for us and do things for us. And he was highly respected also. And uh, I, I don't know, that was a great change in our life. Uh, we were respected and, uh, and, and they we respected each other more. Uh, that was a great thing. <laughs> the best thing to tell them is just to uh, be truthful, be faithful, and be caring. Uh, I think a lot of my life has been caring about these different people that I work with. Not just having them in my presence, caring for them, caring about them. Thank you for joining me for this special edition of 8700 in honor of Black History Month. We'd like to thank First Baptist Church Lithia Springs for allowing us to be here. On behalf of DCTV 23 Station Manager TJ Jaglinski and Communications and Media Specialist Lena Hardy, I'm Rick Martin. Thank you for joining me.